Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to look at something very 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 useful, something which is a pain point for every iOS developer that is build time. We will try to reduce it, we will try to optimize it and we will go from this to this. I have seen the build time increasing from few seconds to 15 minutes, 20 minutes. As the project grows, as the dependencies are added, pods, cartridge, frameworks, SDKs, and whatnot. So as the project size grows, your build time increases significantly. And today in this video, we'll look at some ways, we'll look at some tricks through which we can reduce the build time. And I understand that not all of them will be applicable to your projects, but if you can somehow manage to apply them on your projects, your build time will reduce significantly. So let's dive in. So to see this in action, that how build time can be reduced, the first thing that we need is the Xcode project. And instead of choosing any random project or creating a new project right now, I'm going for this one. This is Xcode benchmark project and it is created by MaxTech. They guys created this for evaluating the performance of the machines, but we will be using this for our purpose because I feel that this is very close to the actual projects, the real projects that we work on. It is having more than 42 Cocoa pods. In total, it is having more than 70 dependencies. The size of the project is more than a gigabyte. So I, I feel that it is very close to the project that we normally work on and it will give us a very realistic idea, very close idea that how build time can be reduced. So let's use this. I'm already having this project downloaded. So let's see that how it looks. It looks something like this. It is having all these dependencies, all these Cocoa pods and all of them have been added intentionally just to introduce more complexities so that we get a more closer idea that how the build time can be reduced because obviously on a small project it won't be that significant. So we are, we are going for this one and what we'll do is that first we will build it without any optimization and we'll see that what is the build time and then we'll perform some ways some tricks uh, we'll try to optimize the build time and then we'll check again that what is the difference between the build times so we will be using terminal for building the project and i have cleared all the derived data so that any cache sort of thing is not used so that it does not give us a false impression of the build time and to build it it is this project is already having a script it looks like this, this benchmark.ss, this is the script that is already the part of the project to build it from the command line. And we will see this script in detail. We will make some changes in it uh, as a part of optimization. So let's first build it without making any changes and, and just note down the build time. Then we'll go for the further optimizations. So, so let me just execute it. That is benchmark.sh. And the project is building. We'll see the build time. And finally the build is succeeded and the time taken is 307 seconds approximately and below are the specifications of my machine so I'm using the MacBook Pro M1 2020 model so on your machines this time may vary uh, but on my machine the clean build I mean after clearing all the derived data and cleaning the project the time taken is 307 seconds approximately now let's try to optimize this now let's try that how this build time can be reduced and up to what extent it can be reduced let's go for it we will open the xcode we will look at the things that can be changed what are the optimizations that we can make to reduce this build time and then we will make those changes in the script because again we will be building the project through command line itself so let's go to xcode and let's see that what are the things that can be changed to reduce this build time the first thing that you need to ensure is the build system that which build system is being used so xcode is having two build systems for your project so one is the legacy build system and the other one is the new legacy takes more time in building the project but the new build system is optimized and it takes comparatively lesser amount of time so ensure that the build system that is being used is the newer one and by default i mean in the new projects the by default selection is for the new build system but in case you are working on any old project or if it is using the old build system just ensure that you do not go for it so here in the workspace settings you can see the build system so new build system and the legacy build system so this is the one thing that you need to take care of now let's see that what else can be done so in order to reduce the build time 
the changes that we'll be making can be classified into three categories so one is the export configuration like the build system the selection of the build system the other one is the project settings that what is going on in the build settings and the third one is the code quality so in this video we will be focusing on only the first two that is the export configuration and the build settings the project settings while i will just touch up a little bit on the code quality that how you can write the code what are the ways of optimizing the code so that it eventually reduces your build time so let's move towards the build settings and let's see that what are the changes that we can do here so here you can check that the only active architectures are being built i mean that should not be the case for the release builds but at least for the development part for the the debugging part or the normal development when you are working on the project you can ensure that only the active architectures are being built and that you can check from here active architectures so this is the first thing that you can check in the build settings the second thing that can be done here is the level of optimization so if i go here you will see that the optimization level here can be changed for the debug and the release the configurations can be changed so for debug it's none as of now so this can be changed to fast fastest the smallest aggressive and there are different configurations provided by xcode so you can choose one of them and again i'm re repeating that not all of them can be applicable to your project but you will have to figure it out that what all changes can you apply in order to reduce your build time so this is one of the ways and the next thing that can be done in the build settings is the generation of dsym so if you see here the debug information format it's as of now dwarf for debug and dwarf with dsym file for the release so this dwarf can be changed to dwarf with dsym file and if you want to know more about that what is the difference between dwarf or what is dsym file or how the logging is done and other related stuff you please comment it in the comment section and then i'll try to cover it in a in a different video because it is out of the scope of this video so what you can do is you can change this to dwarf with dsym file that will reduce your build time the other thing that can be done is in the edit scheme of your project so if i go in the edit scheme section here you will see that there's this option for parallelize build and make sure that it is checked so this reduces the build time by parallelly building the targets that do not depend on each other so eventually your build time is reduced make sure that this is checked the other thing that can be done is increasing the number of threads that is being used by xcode for building the project so by changing the number of threads by increasing or decreasing basically we are using the ability of multi threading of our processors so these days the processors are very fast are very powerful and by changing the number of threads by playing with them we can reduce our build time but again you will have to figure it out it's more of a hit and trial sort of thing so you will have to figure it out that what exactly what number of threads works for you so maybe you can change it to 3 you can change it to 4 you can change it to 8 So it's not the case that every time increasing the number of threads will reduce the build time, but you will have to figure it out for your project that what works best. So we'll we'll make that change in our script. I'll show it to you that how it can be done, how the number of threads can be changed. So that is again one of the optimization ways. And when you build your project through Xcode and you want to see that how much time it took for the build, you can go here and in the product tab. in this perform action you can select this build with timing summary so when the build will be completed you will get a timing summary through which you can identify that ha huh, that it took the lesser amount of time or it took more time this way you can you can identify it although we will be using a command for it in our script i'll show that to you in a minute so let's proceed towards our script let's see that what all is going in there and let's make the changes that we discussed that we saw in the xcode let's write command for those things in the script and then see that how much build time is reduced what did we achieve so in this script you can see that the first thing is the variable that is having the part to our project and the part to our derived data then we are just clearing our console and we are just echoing that we are preparing the environment we took a variable as a start time and initialize with the time and this is the line because of which we will get to know that how much time it took for the build so this show build operation duration this is set to yes that's why we will get the duration if we set it to no we won't get that how much time it took to build and then these are just the normal echo statements to print the things on the console now here there's the command export build and these are the flags that we are having 
so we just mentioned the workspace that is the part to our project we mentioned the scheme that which scheme do we want to build so as you saw in the project we were having different schemes here and we just mentioned our export benchmark as the scheme we mentioned the destination and the derived data path now let's add something here for optimizing the build time and the first thing that we'll add is we'll add a flag to mention that the new build system should be used and this is set to yes so now for the for building of the project the new build system will be used instead of the legacy one the other couple of things that can be done that we discussed is setting the number of threads so here i am setting it to 8 by this px number of parallel build subtask and here on line number 12 i am setting the parallel command exclusively to yes so that is the thing that we discussed about the parallel builds about the different targets and building them parallelly so this is that thing so, so these are the changes that we are making here and this seems fine to me so let's save it and let's again clear our derived data and everything so i'll just clear the derived data once and the derived data is clean let's clean the project as well so the clean is done let's put the xcode and with these changes that we made for optimizing the build time let's build it once again and see that what is the difference that we get so this is 307 seconds let me just take a screenshot of it so that we can compare it later maybe this one and now let's clear our console and let's build it The build succeeded and this time it succeeded in 198.331 second. So as compared to our previous timing that was 307 second, this is a significant reduction in the build time, uh, I guess more than 30-35%. And this was only by making some changes in the project settings and the build settings. So the other thing that you can do for reducing the build time is improving the code quality. So do not prefer type inference, instead go for explicitly mentioning the types that will help in reducing the build time instead of using the dynamic dispatch you can go for using the static dispatch and if you are not sure about what dynamic dispatch or static dispatch is what is the difference and how can it help in, re in reducing the build time here's the link of one of my videos in which i have explained in detail about the dispatch methods you can have a look you will get an idea that how it can help and the other thing that you can do is you can remove the run scripts from the build phases so again, I'm saying that this won't be possible for every project. So for example, let's say that you are having the Swift Lint script and you do not want to remove it. It's totally fine. But if you want to remove the run scripts, it will help in reducing the build time. So go to the build phases, look at how many run scripts you are having. Is there any scope of removal of any of them or all of them in the best case? If that can be done, then it will significantly reduce your build time. Because all these run scripts eventually contributes to your build time and their removal will reduce it. So this is another thing that you can do. So that's pretty much for this video. A new video comes out every Sunday. So you might consider subscribing to my channel. Let's write better code together. Happy coding and stay safe.